it doesn't take very long to talk to almost any Cuban and they will tell you that the embargo, that what we Americans call the embargo, um, and what they call a blockade has hurt Cuba and it's ridiculous to them. But there's a lot of Cubans that say that their economic system is also due to the mistakes and the problems that are caused by their own government. So by Obama going and restoring relations, now people all of a sudden are thinking everything is going to change. Now actually the blockade is still in place. Only the U.S. Congress can lift the blockade. Obama can't do it. So things haven't changed all of a sudden economically where things are just going booming again. But it's certainly raised expectations, I think, in Cuba that uh, better times are right around the corner. And it's going to be difficult, frankly, for the government to meet those expectations. There are three things that Cubans, I think, really want to hold on to. One is their education system, which generates large numbers of college graduates, university graduates, but a lot of frustration among those graduates because the opportunities aren't there. Now, of course, that's a global problem, but the Cuban youth don't see it that way. But they also appreciate the education process. The second thing people want to hold on to is the healthcare system, which is remarkable. Family physicians in every neighborhood, clinics all over the cities, all over the islands, and people know that and they don't want that to change. And the third thing they want to keep, well, I could say 3A and 3B, and they're related to each other, security. There's very little crime anywhere in Cuba, very little street crime. crime. Tourists may, uh, may occasionally have a, a purse snatching or something like that. That's about the worst that ever happens. But at the same time, that, that security also goes along with uh, kind of a sense of social solidarity in the neighborhoods. Cubans appreciate that and want to hold on to that. Now, the real question is, how do you have a great healthcare system, a great education system, maintain security without economic growth? But if economic growth means opening up to the marketplace, you begin to get inequalities. The thing that has allowed Cuba to survive the hostility of the United States, the blockade for so long, has been that people have generally felt that the sacrifices are being made together. They felt that, okay, if it's a hardship and I don't have a lot, but neither does my neighbor. Or there isn't really a social class like the 1% that we now talk about worldwide. But that's beginning to change because if you can uh, have a relative bring you an Italian espresso machine, you can open a cafe and start getting the tourist money. But if you don't have a source of capital from abroad, you don't have that, and that means that you're beginning to see gaps open, serious gaps. Today in Latin America, we talk a lot about um, socialism of the 21st century. And I think that one of the components of that is that people no longer think that, you know, they don't want 20th century socialism, which kind of had no place for the market at all. The trick somehow, as a general principle, is to make the market work for society, not turn, make society work for the market, right? Now, that's a principle. Figuring out how to do it's hard. You only have a certain amount of hard currency. Do you spend it on fertilizer and other inputs for the agricultural sector? Because the most serious problem is agricultural production. They import 60% of their food and more and more of it because more and more tourists are coming expect their, with their expectations much higher. Do you spend that money on free HIV and free medicine to treat people with HIV or AIDS? It's completely free in Cuba. Or you spend those dollars on whiskey for the bars that are catering to the tourists. See, those choices, uh, that, that's probably an oversimplification, but really those are the kinds of choices they face. And the system is highly bureaucratized by which those choices are made. Um, I don't, th you know, the, the, this is where now we get into political change. Are they really going to permit people to make these choices from the bottom up? Or is the party going to impose those choices from the top down? And that's, I think, going to be decided three years from now, uh, or at least a big step towards making that decision, because Raul Castro has promised that he will step down as the head of government. Now, he currently, he just recently, at the party congress, was elected general secretary of the party for five years, right? And that's a much more important position than head of government. But nonetheless, I think Cubans have big expectations that three years from now, there's going to be some very significant change in the country. And again, just like the economic expectations, they're not going to be easy to meet.